Hey guys, how have you been? I've missed you. I miss you so much. Hope you are doing well. And uh, let's get back to calculus. Okay? Right. So this is the last lecture that we left off before the break. And uh, we did two improper integrals. And the first one is a divergent improper integral. Second one is a convergent one. Reason being area under the curve from 1 to infinity is infinite versus area under the curve is finite. Okay? The bottom line of the difference between the two improper integrals lies in the speed of a decreasing as x approaches infinity. Infinite amount of area means your function is a slow decreasing function at the right end versus fast decreasing. And also, our last lecture, I also brought up the connection between improper integral and the infinite series. This is a close cousin of the first one, and this is also a cousin of the second improper integral. You can tell the similarity. You start counting from 1 to infinity, and it's a reciprocal function, linear in the denominator, second power in the denominator. Okay? And they are both called a p-series. It's preferred to have larger p to have a convergent series, p greater than 1 or p less than or equal to 1. Okay. From that point on, I also elaborated. I increased the exponents. And uh, so from this point on, these are all convergent series, polynomial in the denominator, exponential, and this is the n factorial in the denominator. At the other camp, these guys are divergent series, p equals 1 and ln. So this is where we left off last time. Okay. All right, ladies and gents, let's add on a little bit. So when you have a p series, if p equals 1, this series has a special name. It's called a harmonic series. And the rest of them don't have special names. Okay. All right, so let me take out this sheet of paper from our previous lecture. And we're going to start a new one talking about series. And uh, we are in chapter 11. Okay, you have this. So I'm going to start in the second section, 11.2. So let me introduce the definition first. Okay, ready? Section 11.2. Okay. okay, I need to remember, I need to write larger. <laughs> All right. And again, section 11.2, and the title is series. Let me write a definition. A series uh, notation sum and from a fixed number to infinity. A sub n is convergent if when you open it up so if you expand this infinite series, n equals 1, you have a sub 1 plus n equals to 2 plus all the way to a sub n, keep on going, equals a finite or a real number.
and this is the definition. Okay. And what is the difference between n and the x? I talked about this uh, before the break. n, we call a discrete variable, and in this case, they're just positive integers. One, and there's nothing in between, and then two, versus variable x as a, is a real number. No gap, no hole, continues. That's the difference. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start introducing this topic with my favorite example. Uh, I don't know if you remember I told you I am a chocoholic. Okay. All right. You're like, what does that have anything to do with me? Um, so I want to talk about um, the series. Okay. All right. So let me write it down for you. So you have series and starting from 1 finishes off at infinity, 1 over 2 to the n. Let's open it up. When n equals 1, sum means add, n equals to 2, n3, keep it going until you reach 2 to the n, and keep on going nonstop. Okay. Question is, would the result of this infinite sum be a finite number or not? And this is what we want to find out. If you arrive at a finite number, and this is a convergent series. Okay, all right. So now, let's um, pretend I didn't bring a piece of chocolate bar because I'm a chocoholic. If I bring it, I eat the whole thing. So let's say this is a Miss P's favorite chocolate bar. Okay. If you have chocolate on you, maybe right now you can take a bite. And in the meantime, I'm going to take a sip of water. Back in business. So here's Miss P's favorite chocolate. And uh, if she had a discipline, she would cut this into smaller pieces. All right. So how big is a piece of chocolate? Just say it doesn't uh, one inch by one inch. How about that? So this is a one. And this is a one. Okay, all right. So the area of this piece of chocolate is 1. So I try to apply my discipline. Like, hey, I'm not going to eat the whole thing. I'm going to eat half of it. Imagine people with super discipline. They say, no, that's too big. I'm not going to eat the half of a piece of chocolate. Too much sugar. Maybe I would eat um, half of that. Half of a half, that's one-fourth of the chocolate. Or somebody with even more discipline, is going to in moderation, I'm going to eat half of one-fourth, and that's one-eighth. Okay. And I naturally can do half of a one-eighth, half of a one-eighth, that's one-sixteenth. Keep going until I can't fit the number in my little squares and a half of a one. Thirty second is uh, over. I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to stop writing. Okay? All right, so let's connect this back to the series. That's a half, that's a fourth, that's a one eighth, and then that's one over two to the fourth. And then eventually I will have I can keep on trimming this until I can divide it into such a small pieces that I have no room to write. Okay. So, but if I add back all those little pieces, what is the answer? 
if I don't drop any, so I will have half of it, quarter of it, keep on adding it. How big a piece of chocolate do I have to start with? Remember? One, that's right, exactly. So the result of this infinite series equals one. So naturally, the series is a convergent series, but the question is why? Why is the series convergent? And this series has a name. So let me keep notes here. Area. I keep on forgetting that I don't have you in front of me. I need to write more, talk less. It's a learning curve. I will get better at it. Promise you. Okay. All right. So lady gents, this is called a geometric series. What qualifies to be a geometric series with constant ratio? Okay. What is our ratio? How do I move from one term to another? In this case, it's a half. Multiply half, I get to next term. Multiply half, multiply half. Okay. So for this problem, the ratio, we usually use R for ratio. Okay. The reason this geometric series is a convergent series is because absolute value of ratio is less than 1. That's why this is a convergent series. Okay. All right. Um, so maybe I should start a list of different situations of series. Let me take this down. And um, you should start a blank page um, so that we keep track of the examples of series we're about to study between now and maybe towards the end. You ready? A fresh page, a piece of paper. Let's keep track. Okay. All right, practice with me. Um, start learning to write series is a challenge, so you'll get better at it. Okay. All right, so let's start. So I have a series. Oh, okay. Okay. Ladies, gents, so let's start again. A fresh p piece of paper, okay? All right, let's start a series. First term, a over 1, plus second term, plus third. Use plus sign. Usually people write three dots. And I pick up a plus sign again. Nth term, plus sign, three more dots to indicate this infinite series. Then practice learn to write as a sum with me. And starts from 1, goes all the way to infinity, a sub n. So this is an infinite series. Okay. All right, keep track. And inf an infinite series, sometimes people just call it a series. Is Let's break up into cases. Is convergent? Is divergent? If the sum 
Now I'm going to have three cases here. Okay. All right. So make sure you keep uh, enough space for three columns going forward. So let's talk about convergent case, which only has one case. If the sum is a real number equals is a real number. Let's look at some examples. For example, Miss P's chocolate geometric series ratio equals half. And if you open it up, equals half plus 1 fourth or 2 to the squared, keep going, plus, you know, 1 over 2 to the n. And what was the plus, keep on going, what was the result again? Equals 1. Okay. What kind of series is this? Geometric. Uh, what's ratio? Absolute value of 1 half less than 1. All right. So this is a convergent case. Let me split up. Okay. Divergent case uh, has actually two subcases. So if a series is divergent, the sum could be equals sum literally equals infinity or negative infinity. Okay. And there's a one more case. The sum doesn't exist. Okay. I kind of talked about this before, uh, the difference between infinity and that doesn't exist. Okay. All right. So now um, let's look at an example that your sum goes to positive infinity. So for example, okay. Um, I didn't save space over there, so now I'm going to save space. I'm going to write underneath. Okay, lady gents, let's open it up. n equals 1 plus n equals 2. And going. All right. And why does this equals positive infinity? Uh, folks, you notice this is more than one, right? This is more than, also more than one, more than one. You keep on adding one and the one and the one nonstop. Of course, you're going to add up to infinity. Okay. But in addition to that, ladies and gents, you notice this is also a geometric series. Why is that? Because we have ge geometric. Where's my O? Miss P didn't go to ESL, and I don't have you here to help me. I didn't spell geometric right. Now I, I'm correcting it. Oh my God, that one is totally wrong. Let me go back and fix it. What am I going to do without you, huh? See, in class, somebody would have said, Miss P, hey, you didn't spell that right. Now I'm on my own without you. What about the previous one? Did I do that one right? That one is right. This is, okay, sorry about that. So um, the second geometric series, uh, look at its ratio. Absolute value of a ratio equals, uh, you notice the ratio is 3 halves. That's how you go from one term to the, to the next. And you notice the ratio is not less than 1. Okay. 
ratio is not less than one means you are keep on adding terms that gets larger and larger and larger. There is not a chance for the sum to end up to be a real number. Okay. All right. So <laughs> I touched the mic. That was so bad. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Continue here. Okay. So now I want to get to the last case of a divergent series. But the sum is not positive nor negative infinity. So what could that be? Mm, that would be interesting, ladies and gents. So let's look at a series. And uh, negative 1 to the n. Okay. Let's open it up. Equals. n equals 1 plus n equals to 2 plus n equals 3 plus n equals 4. I know you're like, oh, Miss B, don't be stupid. That's zero. Then don't you say if I have a finite number or real number, the result is convergent. That equals to zero. Uh, you are right only half of a time. If I take only four terms, of course, I equal to zero. What if I take one more term? N equals five. Ladies and gents, you notice this is not zero anymore. That is negative one. So this series, the sum doesn't exist because he doesn't know whether you want to go to be 0 or negative 1. Okay? So this is another case of a divergent series. And uh, from now on, you start collecting um, techniques. Each time you see negative 1 to the nth power, you know the sign is going to flip between positive and negative. So if you have a series, the sign flips, we call this alternating series. Alternating series. Sign flips. Okay. All right. So here's the foundation of first level of introduction. And we're going to expand from here. All right, ladies and gents, do you want me to go back and uh, add a ratio to this? Because I didn't write since I wrote it earlier. Uh, I don't have you in front of me. I think I should play safe. Could you? Do you have a room? Let me, let me get rid of that part. Let me write absolute value of ratio equals. Can you see? That's R here. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Take a sip of water or eat some chocolate. Uh, let's, get, let's get back in. All right, back in the game. Okay. All right, so let's look at convergent series again. Okay. What are the convergent series you and I have talked about? And we talked about the sum of 1 over n squared. That is a p series, p equals to 2, p equals to 2, and it's greater than 1. Therefore, this is a convergent series. Okay. Now, watch. What if I add a little bit to it? Okay. What if I include alternating signs in my already convergent p equals to 2 series? When p equals to 2, people call it a 2 series. Okay. What happens now? So let's stop and think about it. Why is 1 over n squared convergent? Let me lay an extra piece of a square paper on top. Why is the 2 series convergent?
All right. I'm going to remove this temporarily. I'm going to open it up for you to see. Okay. All right, ladies and gents, expand 1 over 1 to the squared, and equals to 2, 2 to the squared, and equals 3, 3 to the squared. So this is a convergence series. Why? Because, because first time you, add, you have 1, and then second term is one-fourth. Okay. You notice you keep on adding terms that decreases fast enough for the result to be a finite number. Let me see, did I spell finite right? N-I-T-E. No, I didn't. No, I corrected. Okay. All right. Now, what if I have an extra help? What if the extra help is not only I'm adding terms, keep on getting smaller very fast, also I have the help of alternating signs. So watch. When n is 1, sign is negative. When n is 2, When n is 3, this for sure equals a finite number because you start a negative number, that's 1. You add up a little bit, you bring it down a little bit, you go up a bit, you, you go down a little bit. Without a sign flipping, you already equals a finite number. With the help of alternating signs, for sure, this equals a finite number. Okay. So uh, let's keep on bringing connections here. For your divergent series, let's look at a harmonic series. And that's a divergent series because it adds up to infinity. What if I give it a little boost of alternating sign? So with a sign flipping, you're going to add some, you're going to subtract some, you keep on reducing the sum, alternating signs. So this is going to be n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. So again, you notice you start with a negative 1, and you add a, a second term. All of a sudden, the sum becomes negative a half. And then you keep on reducing, and then you subtract some, and you add some, you subtract some. And this eventually is going to be a finite number. So these are alternating series that's convergent. Okay. All right. And I will come back, reintroduce all of this a um, little bit later. And uh, right now, I want to go back and uh, talk more about geometric series. Okay. All right. So let me take this down. And uh, I want to introduce geometric series. Okay. Right, here we go. Geometric series. And a, a standard of format looks like this. Okay. And uh, your ge geometric series, let's split up. First, let's introduce definition, and then I'll talk about why. Okay. 
your geometric series converges to if R stands for ratio, absolute value of a ratio is less than one. Diverges if absolute value of a ratio is greater than or equal to one. Okay. So question is, so R stands for ratio like a chocolate problem ratio is half. So what is A? Let's open it up and then we can see right away. So when you first start working with series, I highly recommend you expand the series term by term. It really helps to identify what's what. Okay, all right, here we go. When n equals to zero, uh, first term is A. This is n equals to zero. I write, let me write underneath for you. Sum means plus sign n equals 1, n is a discrete variable, plus n equals to 2. Okay. All right, and then you keep on going. Okay. All right, ladies and gents, so it's obvious ratio is r because going from one term to the other, I keep on multiplying r, or I divide a term by the previous term ratio is r. And uh, from here, right away, you notice a is the leading term. So let's keep track of everything, OK? So if your, com if your geometric series converge, that is, if absolute value of a ratio is less than 1, and you do have a sum, this is very important for future sections, the sum equals leading term in the numerator, and the denominator is one subtract ratio. And I will help you to memorize this from this point on. Okay, all right. Now I'm going to bring up our textbook and go ahead, open your book, find your page. I'll wait for you. Let's get, get back in. Okay. So um, let me focus this right. Okay. All right. So here you can see the standard way of deriving the formula. Um, this is what we call nth partial sum. Okay. Nth partial sum means you add up a first n term. And here we we'll use a limit as a limit approaching infinity, and this is the sum. However, let me show you how to do this quickly. Okay, all right. And then the other, um, uh, what happens when r equals one or r is uh, or, or r equals negative one? So let me show you how to do this. Like really, Miss P's quick way of doing this. Okay, all right. Here, follow me. Suppose. Geometric series is convergent then. Okay. So again, what does that mean if a series is convergent? That means I start adding, this is n equals to z 0 plus n equals 1 plus n equals to 2, plus, plus. Okay. All right, ladies and gents, um, can you leave me a little bit space here? And uh, let's write n term plus. Okay. And this is the nth term. Can you help me to find out what's the term before the nth term? What would you think it looks like? It should be a times ratio to what power? Yup, 
and minus 1, the one before. Okay. All right, that's very good. And then we'll keep on adding. Again, being convergent means I can add up to a final number, whether it's a 1 or a pi over 6 or something like that. Um, let's call a name. Let's call it S. Okay. Now, guess what I'm going to do? I am going to multiply negative r, ratio is r. To both sides of an equal sign. Okay, let's go see what happens. So let's multiply. And subtract. No, I, um, I'm on this guy's case, so that's going to be. Okay. All right. So I keep on going nonstop. On the right hand side, that will be negative r times s. Okay. So, lady gents, right away you notice I can uh, cancel out a bunch of terms if I add them up. So I'm going to do a sum. I'm going to add up on both sides of the equal sign. And then naturally, you can see the left-hand side is going to be really, really interesting to you. Okay. Cancel. Okay. And also notice the direction of canceling. Start with this guy. Find its partner. Cancel. Do you notice like the leading term has no one to cancel with? Yeah, that's going to be the interesting part. Would you think this guy will have a partner to cancel out? Yep. And they all do. So again, look, this and that will cancel out. Okay. So the only one that's left will be the leading term. So left and right add up. Left-hand side, leading term. Right-hand side, may I factor? I sum out. Okay. And we are going to divide both sides by 1 minus r. Naturally, uh, r cannot be 1. Okay. All right. So this is where they arrived at the sum. So again, this is a lazy version of how this is acquired. And also, uh, if you take a look at what happens when r equals 1, and then you just keep on adding, 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 adding nonstop, and you're going to add up to a positive or negative infinity based on what the sign of a is. So also, I want to talk about what happens when r equals negative 1, special case. Okay. If r equals negative 1. What happens? Let's plug in and see what's up. Plugging negative 1. Uh-huh. And actually, I have talked about this a moment ago. Oops, I pushed this sideways. Okay. And you notice your leading term A has no connection with your discrete variable n, no n on it. So you can literally just factor the a out of the series because when n changes, it doesn't affect it. Now where are we? We did this. Okay. Alternating series start off, oh, you're like, wait. Uh, we started different numbers. Here you start off on 1, here you start off on 0. Would it change anything? No, it shouldn't change because if I open it up, let me write underneath, n equals to 0, 1, plus n equals 1, negative 1, plus 1, negative 1. Again, be careful. You're like, isn't this 0? Uh, maybe, but not necessarily, right? So if you take an even number of terms, yes, you are right. So this is going to be 0 times a 
that's going to be zero. However, what if I add on one more term? And you notice this is going to be one, one times a. So this series doesn't have a finite number because as a sum, because it can decide whether it wants to stop at zero or stop at a. Okay. All right. So let's see. Does this have anything else I want to talk about? Um, this is about it. So uh, there's a little bit of time left. Okay. Why don't I help you to work homework problems, shall we? Okay. My favorite activity, homework with you. And I know some of you folks, you keep homework on a separate notebook, so get that out and I'll wait for you. I miss you, I miss you, I miss you guys. I don't have you in front of me and I don't know what I'm doing because I can't see you. It is very difficult. I suppose I'll get better at it. <laughs> you ready? All right, so this is the group of uh, homework problems I want to do with you. So I'm going to start with 58, okay? Not that many problems. And I will do as many as possible. And then you let me know if you need help. Start. So again, I'm on section 11.2. And uh, I'm going to start on 58. You have a series right and I recommend you expand n equals one plus n equals to two and three. I know you're going to ask me, Ms. P, do I have to? No, you don't have to, but it helps to identify. Right away, you notice this is a geometric series. So why is it a geometric series? Because it has a constant ratio. Each time you multiply x plus 2 to move on to the next term. So let's keep track of that. Okay? Let's use R for ratio. So ratio equals x plus 2, constant ratio. Leading term, we use a. Leading term, coincidence, also x plus 2. Okay. All right, so once you have a geometric series, let's bring up the definition. What does it take for the geometric series to be convergent? We need absolute of ratio to be less than one. Okay, all right, let's set that up. So we're going to set absolute value of ratio. Let me write the R here, less than one, because it's confusing later when you look at it notes. Okay. And ratio happened to be x plus two less than one. Now you solve linear inequality, open up, less than 1, greater than negative 1. Subtract 2, finish. Okay. All right. Now, use your condition here, your infinite series, when it's in the window between negative 3 and a negative 1, it is going to converge. Converge to what? Converge to numerator is the leading term.
denominator 1 minus ratio. Okay. Leading term is x plus 2. Ratio happened to be x plus 2 as well, parentheses. Clean up our algebra equals numerator and denominator is negative x minus 1. And that's the sum. Let me elaborate just a little bit. Okay. So for this problem, this is for um, future sections. Okay. This series actually is a power series. Why like is the power series? Because the series involved variable x. Okay. And this is a power series. Center. at x plus 2 equals 0, x equals negative 2. Centered at negative 2. Sorry, what a mess. Okay. Radius of convergence. You don't need to remember this. I will help you with this later. Radius of a convergence is 1. Where did I get that from? I got all of that from absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 1. Okay. Why is centered at a negative 2? Right here, centered at a negative 2. Okay. Why is radius 1? Radius 1. I need another color. Radius is 1. Radius is 1. And I will come back, talk about this when we have time. Okay. All right, next problem with me. Let's do number 60. You don't have to, but I, I would like to ask you to drill this technique with me. This is going to be really, really handy later when you have to come up with your own series expressions. Right now you have a series to work with. Later on, you and I will be writing series. When you have negative 4 to the nth power, you just got to take my word. You just got to trust me here. May I ask you to peel off the alternating signs away from the 4, okay? And then you're going to have 4 to the end. You've got to trust me because this is going to make life much easier going forward, okay? So right away, you notice you have an alternating sign, alternating series. So if you open it up like, uh, you can leave it like this, or you can put your 4 and x minus 5 together. I leave that up to you. You don't have to, but I should really like to see you having the alternating signs peeled off. Okay. All right, as always, expand. n equals to 0, 1. n equals 1, practice, alternating signs, negative 1 to the first power, negative. I have 4 to the first and parentheses to the first. n equals to 2, alternating sign, positive, 4 to the squared, x minus 5 to the squared. Okay. Keep on going. Let's go one more. n equals 3. Alternating signs will give you a negative sign. And uh, this time, maybe we can put 4 and uh, x minus 5 together. Just, uh, just practice different ways of writing so you won't be bored. That should be enough. Okay. Ladies and gents, you notice this is a geometric series. Let's list what we need to know. Leading term is 1. Ratio, huh, ratio. Obviously, is 4 times x minus 5. Do you think that's right? Mm, half right. 
going from 1 to, going from the first n equals 0. I keep on making mistakes today. What's up with me? Going from 0 term to the first term, um, it is not positive, right? It's negative 4 times. So I think it's like this. Do you think that's right? Let's check the next pair. How do I go from n equals 1 to n equals to 2? Um, makes, yeah, so need to have the negative sign to go positive and to go negative. Okay. All right, now we go. So once you have that, um, let's force it to be convergent. So we're going to set it up like we did earlier. Let me move this up just a little bit. I'm looking at the clock. I don't want to go over your time. So I'm going to set absolute value of ratio to be less than 1. So absolute value is less than 1. Let's solve. So this is equivalent to absolute value x minus 5 is less than 1 fourth. Open, open, less than, greater than, plus 5 everywhere, Finish off. Okay. All right. So this is a where the series is going to converge. I'm looking at the clock. I don't want to go over your time. Just give me a few minutes, then I will finish this. Okay. And I will give your time back next time I see you. If I do, do go over your time, as always. So your series, let's continue. Let's uh, put condition on top of it. So where did we say we were? If your x is in the domain from negative 19 fourth to 21 fourth, a small window of opportunity. If you restrict your x Again, this is called a radius of a, this is called an interval of a convergence, more or less. I'll talk about that later. The sum is going to equal leading term, which is a 1, denominator 1 minus ratio. What's our ratio? Right there. Let's clean up our algebra. This is um, a little bit ugly, huh? Equals. Distribute. Be careful with the algebra. What, Wendy? That's right. Okay. Finish off. Let me check everything before I let go of you because I don't have you to t sitting here telling me that I'm doing the right or not doing the right. So try ratio. I'm scared. Okay, I think it's right. All right, ladies and gents, thank you so much. Uh, you have a good day. I will see you soon. Thank you, Judy.